Right. This is the project uh, we're using WebStorm. Um, and this is our definition language for the abstract syntax tree. We say it's a language, we have a model, which has a name, etc., And it has topics like fractions. It has those flow descriptions that tell if you have all the answers right at page A, you go to page B, and we got test scenarios where you can test whether given a set of answers, it will actually go to the right place. Um, we have model units defined as Annika explained. We have abstract concepts like a page, and then we have specific pages, which are subtypes of page, etc., etc. Uh, and if we only have an AST and we then build it and look in the editor, then we get a default projection which is maybe not uh, uh, the nicest to look at. It basically shows tree structure with all the properties and the values, uh, but it's fully functional. If I want to add a line, I can just add another line and I can add some text. Or if I say, oh, this Boolean value should be true, I can change that. So even without anything but the AST, you can already play around with the language. Um, now, of course, this doesn't look like much. So going to the edit language, I can specify using a WYSIWYG like approach, say, okay, for a topic, the projection, that's the thing between the square brackets is a label topic and then the property name, description label, description, and a collection of pages, which in this case is vertical. And a theory page, in this case, is just a line of dashes, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so if I do the same for questions and functions, and especially for the line, because they look horrible this way, and I save this, then Oops, I need to go to the right directory. Oh, oh I made a, a simple error. What it now does, it takes those definition files and generates the code. And then the hot reloader will reload the model it reloads it actually twice because there's a double generation and you see in the editor you see now that the fraction the topic description pages the theory all looks more or less like we defined here um, and you see questions you see score you still see that the expressions here are still a little bit unreadable um, but with a little work, you can make it look much better. Um, something we can also do is say, well, actually a page is an abstract concept, but we still define a projection for a page. And then in a sub concept, I can just refer to that projection. So I don't have to repeat it all the while, all the time. So I'll get rid of the first theory description and then use the other one and uh, uncomment all the other pages um, and as you can see this point to page um, there's also a projection called footing for page and we refer to that one below here so you can have multiple projection for page and you can refer by name to them and the page footing just uncommented that is the list of questions and the list of scores which makes it easy to make those pages look the same for the things that are identical so
this should start to look a little bit better. Okay, reload. And if I continue, because the expressions are defined in another file, where we define expressions uh, and limited concepts, and we even have things like binary expressions. And the fact that we define them as expressions and binary expressions is that we can then define priorities and the editor then will know if you add a plus or a minus or some other kind of expression that it can balance the tree correctly. So if I just uncomment all the editor files, Let's do this one as well. And I run the generator again. And things become to be really nice. Now we have expressions that we can actually read. And we can change values if we want. We can add cases. Um, if you look at the other things, the flow, it says, okay, for the fractions topic, I have a rule for page fractions theory. When the answers are graded as A, I go to page fraction video one. If they're B, I go, B, I go to fraction video two. So this defines the page transitions. And there's a test model which says, OK, for this topic using this flow, if I am on page fractions theory and the answers are like this, then I expect, uh, I should make it smaller, to go to this page. And the idea is that you can run these tests and see whether that actually works. Another special thing we have is tables. So for a flow rule, we can say that the transition should show as a table, row based. And then for a single transition, we say the table projection has two headers and the condition and the go to page as its contents. And we can do the same with the tests. And we have a table set. When on this page, given these answers, we go to that page. Uh, don't forget to save them. Oops. So if I now look at the flow, I can see that there is a table here. Uh, and I can add things to the table or delete things from the table, etc. And if I look at a test, I'll get a similar table, which tell me starting on this page, giving these questions, I go to another page. And I can, of course, uh, so like that, I can uh, turn off certain projections like the tables, and then they will show again as text. Uh, one thing you will see, is that if I select a page here, I can see all the pages, not just the pages from topic fractions 10, but also the pages from other topics, because that's the default for scoping. Um, so what we can do is move the scope file there, and we can define scopes. And the first thing we define is namespaces. And those can be nested. And then for certain namespaces, we can have namespace additions. So for the flow description, which is, uh, let's look at it, which is this big thing, I say, okay, the namespace addition is self.topic. So self.topic is practice one. 
which means if inside here I'm looking for a page, I will only get pages from fraction 10. Because others are hidden and fraction 10 is added. Go. Let's, let's go to the flow. And if I now look here, I will only get the right things. Now, this is relatively little work to get scoping, which will cover a lot of the cases. You can always go to the TypeScript code and make it more specific, but we won't go into that right now. Um, the other thing we can add are types. And types have several things. It tells you what is a type, which concept, and it explains which concepts have a type. And in this case, rule expression is the base class for all expressions, so this means all expressions have a type. And then there are lots of things that tell you how to infer the type. So for a question, the correct answer given in the definition is its type, and for a question, right, question reference, then the type is the type of the question. Uh, and of course, for simple things like literals, we just have a fixed type. And this is becomes more interesting if it's combined with validation rules. Uh, valid? Because in the validation rules, you can add type set rules. So I can say for an end expression, the left must be Boolean and the right type must be Boolean. And for a comparison, the left and the right must be the same type. And I can also have a my own error message. So if you have users that won't understand the default error messages, you can give your own message here. So, oh, I should save it. So right now I can see that there are problems because the type of theory one, which is Boolean, which is taken from the type of the correct answer, which is a Boolean, should be equal to the type of one divided by two. So this this oh this equal sign has a problem. And if I add Mm, put in here and I do a validate that the error goes away. Um, ah. I should again. Now one thing is the Projection for a fraction is one slash two. I don't really like that. I want to look at differently. So what I have done is um, for the editor, I've created a custom projection and this was written in TypeScript. So for a fraction literal, like one divided by two, I create my own box. And I create grid cell boxes and I add them to a grid box. And there is an SVG box with a line in between. And if I add this, then for this specific concept, it will then use this projection like over here. And the rest will just follow the rules as defined in the definition files. Um, one additional thing we also generate by default is a nice picture of the AST definition. So you see a rule expression here, which typically has lots of subclasses. You see different kind of pages here. Uh, 
And this is nice, so you can get a quick overview of what your language looks like. Uh, it might actually get really, really big for some uh, real things. Boom. Let's see. Boom. boom, 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 boom. Styling is maybe interesting to just quick take a quick look. This is all default styling, and the styling is done through a style file. And what I can do here is say, okay, for a label pages, I define uh, these are all variables which are defined as part of the frame. So I can define the font weight of the label box and the color of the label box. And if I change these, then I have to apply this to the application. And then you'll see that the theory and the pages all become purple or dark magenta. Uh, you see the question and the score that become bold. Now this way through using these variables and setting them for specific things in the uh, in the editor, you can style everything. Well, not everything, but quite a lot. Mm. And custom validators are quite easy to write. Now this is one custom validator and it says, okay, this is for a flow description. And if the name doesn't start with flow, I give an error message. That's all it does. So if I apply this, And I go to the flow. There are no errors uh, until I do something here. And then I say validate. Is there an error message now? Oh, it should start with flow. Hmm? It still starts with flow. The name still starts with flow. Oh, it should start with flow. So this is actually okay. Only if I put something in front, then it's wrong. And now I get the error message with the type typo here, W, okay. which is there, which shouldn't be there. Uh, and last but not least, we can go to the test. Um, and what you can do there is select the test and then say run the interpreter. Mm. Ah. Yes, I changed the model. Things are broken now. That's not so smart to do. Let's try again. Ah, now this is not nice and integrated with the editor yet. So what you see here is basically a complete trace of what has been calculated. Uh, the end result is that this scenario, test what happens when else are correct. So that's the scenario has two failing steps. And just to show that it's absolutely not integrated, if I go to the developers tools and I look at what you see there, you see that the page score for this is grade B. And then it expects to go to video two and it actually goes to video two, which is okay. And another step actually goes to video one, but expected to go to fractions theory. And the last one, the third one is also incorrect. So this needs to be better integrated. And the way to write an interpreter is basically, you have one class which is generated 
And what you need to do is for every concept that needs to be interpreted, you write the interpreter code. And then the uh, the, gen, the, the framework will take care that if you call it on a sub node, it will also call the right one, etc. Okay. Yes, thank you very, thank you very much for your presentations and demo. Uh, I presume you had finished. Am I right? Uh, just a few Almost. more things. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. Well, you I'll skip this next one. one for us to get to have some time for the Q and A. Thank you. I'd like to mention LineWeb, which is um, an effort we are uh, um, working on to uh, create an interchange format. So that's probably interesting for every uh, everyone who was in this uh, meeting. Great. Okay, that's Finished. it.